The title of this presentation is Phase Transition for the Long-Range Easing Model in Lower Dimensions with the Powell's Argument. To begin with the presentation overview, we'll be discussing, um, well, we'll be introducing the long-range easing model and um, it's in its inner parts, and we'll be describing components of a previous argument uh, for proving that a phase transition occurs in the long-range random field easing model and how a similar method can be used to demonstrate that uh, a phase transition occurs in lower dimensions for the long-range easing model. And in this argument, we'll be discussing the prospects of applying uh, the argument for proving that such a phase transition occurs. And the components of the argument include uh, defining a long-range contour system, as well as the second part in which we'll describe a procedure for flipping the spins of long-range contours. And then in the third part, we'll be making use of an upper bound due to telegram and an argument using Dudley's entropy bound in a major measurizing theorem, as well as uh, providing a statement of the powers argument. So we'll first uh, define the model in which the long range easing model can be defined with the following Hamiltonian. It's the typical Hamiltonian that we use for defining the easing model um, in which for the first term of the Hamiltonian, we have a summation over X and Y in a finite volume. And then in the second term of the Hamiltonian, we have that one of the sites belongs to the to the finite volume, whereas the second site Y uh, belongs to the complement of the finite volume, which is attached to the spins eta of Y. And uh, we can introduce long range behavior to the Hamiltonian, the, the easing model by introducing couplings of the form J of X, Y, uh, uh, which is uh, the absolute value of X minus Y to the minus alpha for X not equal to Y. But besides the Hamiltonian, the coupling, we can proceed to define a probability measure for the long range easing, long range easing model in which it takes the following form. Uh, we'll suppress some notation just to lighten it for the rest of the presentation in which we'll be looking at the probability LR of eta meaning that the probability of the long range using model under boundary conditions eta, which is supported over some finite volume lambda at inverse temperature beta, which is a function of sigma and eta, namely the spin sigma within the finite, contained within the finite volume, as well as the spins eta contained within the complement of the finite volume, which encode the boundary conditions. And it's the exponential beta of the long range Hamiltonian uh, supported over the finite volume eta, as well as normalized by the long range partition function, um, which is also uh, has boundary conditions eta and is supported over the finite volume uh, lambda at inverse temperature beta. And the partition function for the long range easing model takes the form in which it's a summation over the configuration space of boundary conditions eta supported over the finite volume lambda of the exponential of beta times the long range Hamiltonian. But besides defining the model, we can also introduce script D, which is related to some components of the Ding and Zhuang strategy that I mentioned in the abstract for the archive preprint for this for this uh, paper, in which um, they they look at making use of uh, certain arguments relating to Pao's argument and some other components, which we'll introduce, which can be used to demonstrate that phase transition occurs for different models of statistical mechanics. In this case, for this particular model, statistical mechanics, uh, we also have to make use of this script D term, which makes its way into some later arguments that we'll be alluding to, in which we look at a product over sites contained with over sites U contained within the finite volume of one over square root of two pi of an exponential of minus two, minus eta square root of U over two uh, times uh, the long range probability measure that we introduced two slides ago. And in statistical mechanics, it's also very common and typical for people to discuss about taking a weak infinite volume limit. What this means is that we would like to take a sequence of finite volumes and to gradually increase the volume until we exhaust a larger finite volume or even the entire uh, volume of whatever lattice the model is defined on. In this case, we're looking at uh, Z2 because we're looking at the two-dimensional long-range easing model. And this is to say that uh, we're looking at a sequence of finite volumes lambda n, and we're taking the limit as n tends to infinity of the long-range probability measure of the easing model. Um, and as we take the infinite volume limit and we obtain some limiting probability measure, we exclude or we drop the dependency of lambda n, uh, which is given by one of the subscripts in the 
in the bottom part of the probability measure. And as I had alluded to previously uh, in the overview slide, one of the components is uh, making use of the powers argument. The powers argument is a classical model of statistical mechanics, and it's even been introduced and discussed a lot by Dumino Copan and several variants of talks that he's given at the Cambridge uh, Physics S Society and uh, other types of talks in which um, historically it was used to demonstrate that a phase transition occurs because easing, he, he uh, incorrectly concluded that the easing model is always in the paramagnetic phase. And what this means is that if easing was correct in his arguments to show that the easing model is always in the paramagnetic phase, that would mean that varying the critical temperature or varying any, any other parameters of the model would always result in the model always lying within one corner of the phase diagram or one region of the phase diagram in which it would, at all, it would, it would only exhibit paramagnetic behavior. But this isn't true, obviously, because the easing model is a very rich model of statistical mechanics, and it can exhibit phase transitions in different qualities. So to prepare ourselves for the Powell's argument, we're going to be making use of it for a different type of model in lower dimensions for the long-range easing model instead of just the easing model itself, in which we'll have to define a set of contours as well as different flipping procedures for these contours and to discuss how this would all fit in within the classical framework, but at the same time allow us to observe and make use of the argument for making some new conclusions. So this is given by the fact that we can define this, this set of contours by a big gamma zero of n, which is given by the following set of paths. We're looking at the past gamma, little gamma, and big gamma, such that zero belongs to the interior i of gamma, as well as the total length of the path or the total support of the path being of length n. And now we're getting to the flipping procedure. So actually, in this present, in this short presentation, we're only going to be describing two flipping procedures, and this is the first one that we're going to be describing. And we introduce it first because it's a simpler type of flipping procedure, which is used to erase contours from a long from a from a long range easing configuration. And we're going to make use of this to introduce the more complicated flipping procedure that we're going to use later, which can be used to demonstrate that the phase transition occurs for the long range easing model in lower dimensions. In particular, the simpler flipping procedure that we're going to first introduce is given by tau A of sigma of I, meaning that A is some finite, is some finite volume of, of ZD, and I is the site at which the flipping procedure is going to occur. And it's a mapping from R of ZD into R of ZD, and it's given by the following image. So it's given it's given by this formula here, in which, depending upon whether the site I that we're looking at belongs to A or not, we're either going to flip all the flip all the uh, flip all the spins of the long range easing configuration, which means whatever whatever the whatever the um, yeah, so whatever the spins were, we're going to just reverse them, do a minus sigma of i. And because we know that the easing model is a binary spin system, meaning that the spins can only take plus one or minus one values, uh, this will result in a flipping of whatever the spins were before we were applying this flipping procedure in the first place. As well as the fact that we also have a sigma of i guy, which is given by otherwise, um, in which if i doesn't belong to the finite volume, we don't touch these spins and we leave them alone as they were before we we were applying the flipping procedure to the spins at the sites i which belong within the finite volume a and this flipping procedure is important because it also fits within the ding and zhuang strategy when uh, john ding was at upenn in which he made use of the following argument uh, one of the following comp one of these components for demonstrating that phase transitions can be shown to occur, in which they define a particular quantity, which is given by the following. We define delta A of H, or I'm sorry, that should be a delta A of uh, eta. I'm sorry for that tri typo, but um, it should be delta A of eta, which means that um, we're looking at this function delta within the finite volume A, which is a function of uh, eta, the, the external field and it's minus one over the inverse temperature times the logarithm of the ratio of the partition function in which the partition function, which appears in the numerator of this ratio is just given by eta, whereas the partition function that's also given under plus boundary conditions in the denominator of the expression is given by um, the effect of tau of eta, which is the flipping procedure in the previous slide. So if we're going to intuitively, if we're going to make use of some type of powers argument and the Ding and Zhuang strategy for proving that a phase transition occurs in lower dimensions of the easing model, we have to look at a similar type of quantity as this, 
but we have to be careful because even if this quantity from the logarithm of the ratio of these two partition functions, it looks very similar, it's actually quite different because the flipping procedure that we're going to introduce to use a Powell's argument on is going to be completely different. So it's going to be a little bit more complicated, which we'll introduce a little bit later in the slides. And another part that we're going to use for the flipping procedure for the Ding and Zhuang strategy is given by the fact that we can look at the supremum of this following ratio. So we're going to look at the cardinality of delta uh, from the interior of the past gamma of eta normalized by C1, where C1 is some strictly positive constant uh, uh, times the uh, times the support of the path, and we're going to look at the uh, the choices of paths for which the supremum is less than uh, a quarter. So this is just a particular threshold that Ding and Zhuang look at in their paper, in which the uh, the authors of the uh, other reference, uh, the 2022 and 2023 references, which I mentioned in uh, my preprint. Um, uh, uh, from those authors, which I'll include the references for in the uh, in the in the description for the video, they draw our attention to making use of this fact in a similar threshold, namely looking at where the supremum is strictly less than one to prove that uh, the phase transition occurs for the long range using model in lower dimensions. But besides all these ingredients that we've been looking at, we also have to look at and make use of a coarse graining strategy, which is a very classical argument due to Fisher, Froelich, and Spencer, in which they define um, a cube CM of X, which is meant to be uh, which is meant to be interpreted as some coarse graining of the of the square lattice. So what this means is that um, we can look at um, the intersection of this intersection that's given here. And the way that we can look at it is that um, in the in the brackets, the product term that we have is look, going from i is equal to one to d, and this is just the cube of a side length two to the m minus one that's centered at um, each point or each side of the lattice two m x i. So what it's going to do is that um, it's going to introduce some type of coarse graining, like how I'm demonstrating with my pen here, is that it's going to introduce a bunch of boxes. Um, which will cover which will cover the square lattice and it can be used for the d-dimensional square lattice but or um or the or the d-dimensional lattice but in this case we're just going to be looking at it for the square lattice and this can help us uh, demonstrate that the phase transition occurs by looking at um what's uh, some other technical conditions which are mentioned in the paper which are not included in the slides but it's related to capturing uh, the that the uh, probability of the complement of a bad event occur occurring is exponentially small. So this is relating to and making use of uh, some classical arguments due to this Fisher, Froelich, and Spencer paper and uh, incorporating it with some new ingredients and some new components to demonstrate that the phase transition occurs. And now we can arrive to the statement of the phase transition in which in which uh, there are many different ways to state that phase transitions can occur for either quantum systems, but in other systems of physics. And in our in our statistical mechanics background, uh, we're looking at uh, the conditions under which the probability measures under plus and boundary conditions are distinct. And in the preprint on the archive that I'll also include as a reference in the description of the video, it's given by theorem phase transition in which we state that the long range easing model undergoes a phase transition in lower dimensions. So over some finite volume lambda for d greater than or equal to three, or I think that should be, sorry, d greater than or equal to two, there exists a critical parameter beta c with beta c depending on alpha and d, uh, and another parameter epsilon with epsilon also depending upon alpha and d, such that for beta greater than or equal to beta c and epsilon greater less than or equal to epsilon c, the probability measures for the long range using model on their plus and boundary conditions differ. And it's important just to notice that each one of the each one of the subscripts in the bottom part of the probability measures for the long range using model is dependent upon lambda, the finite volume, the inverse temperature beta, and this uh this uh this parameter epsilon, which is taken to be um less than or equal to uh epsilon c. And this statement encapsulates the fact that. With probability boldface P almost surely, uh, this means that uh, the probability measures for the long range easing model under plus and boundary conditions are distinct and are not equal. And this is demonstrating that a phase transition occurs 
There are many different types of ways to demonstrate that a phase transition occurs, but this is one of them. Other ways can include a divergence of the correlation length and other things. But um, in this case, we're looking at whether the probability measures for the long range easing model differ under different sets of possible boundary conditions that we can enforce on our configurations in the sample space. And as we have been alluding to previously, the uh, the flipping procedure that we have been introducing first, it's a very simple flipping procedure, and there can exist a more complicated flipping procedure to demonstrate that the phase transition occurs for the long range easing model in lower dimensions. And this one is more complicated in which, excuse me, uh, there are some similar types of components that we gave earlier, but the difference is that we either look at sigma x or minus sigma x or minus one, depending upon whether x belongs to any one of these sets. So these sets depend upon the fact that the V of gamma part, which appears in the first condition for just um, for for the image of the flipping procedure being just sigma x at the site x, is uh, is given by the union of the support of the pass gamma, uh, which are given from the long range uh, the long range pass from the long range system as well as the fact that um it's it, it has to um it has to also belong to i minus sigma of gamma meaning that there has to be passed with a minus label and uh, directly below the image of the uh this sigma uh, sigma x image there's also a minus sigma x image which is given by the fact that uh the the flipping procedure max that maps to a minus sigma x image um from whatever path uh that we first input into the long range flipping procedure if the uh if the uh if the if the labels on the path um are plus one instead and then it's minus one if x belongs to the support of any of the paths so it's just a little bit of a different formulation of the flipping procedure and how this actually comes into play in uh some very technical arguments which i'm not which uh, i don't really think are uh, worth it uh, to bring up in this uh, presentation because it's kind of a little complicated, but it appears near the end of the preprint how this how this flipping procedure for the long range contour systems comes into play with the powers argument for demonstrating that the phase transition occurs. And then we can see that, but at the same time, we can see that one of the more simple parts of the flipping procedure um, appears in the following arguments for the long range easing Hamiltonian. Um, there can it's it's very classical for us to consider the effect of the flipping procedure on us on um on some configuration sigma and to subtract the Hamiltonians under minus boundary conditions for the long range easing model in which we look at the Hamiltonian of tau of sigma minus the Hamiltonian of a uh, sigma and uh, in this case there's some other technical arguments which can be used. Um, from in a similar way from the 2022 and 2023 references from the authors, which I'll provide, as I mentioned earlier, I'll provide in the description of the video, which can be upper bounded with um, some 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 constants times the absolute value or the or the the support of the path, as well as these two functions fi of plus of gamma and f uh, support of gamma, where um, c1, c2, and c3 are strictly positive. And now as we're progressing further along in our general description of how the phase transition for the long range easing model can be formulated and some of the pieces that go into the argument, we can look at these ingredients for the long range uh, phase transition and the easing model in lower dimensions. So the first part is that we have to make use of a majorizing measure theorem that I mentioned in the in the in the second slide when we were giving an outline in which for a metric space TD and a continuous time process X of T, which is indexed for little t and big T from the t sets of all possible times, uh, the expectation of X of T um, there exists some universal strictly positive constant L for which the following inequality holds. So this is given by a sharp inequality. And um, I I don't want to define uh, the metric that's given by gamma two of TD, but it's just some metric uh, that's introduced in a paper that in, um, from the metric that lives in this uh, metric space, um, we can obtain a sharp, a sharp, uh, a sharp bound, uh, which has in the lower bound a reciprocal of L and in the upper bound just L, for the expectation of the supremum of this uh, continuous time process. So this is the first ingredient that's going into the argument. And uh, this is this is this is where some more of the technical parts of the argument come in. 
But besides this ingredient, we also have another part, which is also related to the fact that we can look at the Dudley's entropy bound. And this is a classical type of argument that we just restated in the paper for completeness, in which it states that for the family random variables of the continuous time process X of T that we've been introducing in the previous slide, um, a similar type of inequality holds for the long range random field easy model, as well as for the long range easy model that we provided on this slide, in which if we look at the absolute value of the difference of the process X of T minus X of S, meaning the values of the continuous time process at times T and S, if the probability under plus boundary conditions in the long range uh, probability measure that this exceeds or is greater than or equal to lambda is bounded above by some exponential where um, we have some term that's inversely proportional to the metric D of ST from our metric space big T, as well as another factor which, which is uh, directly proportional to lambda. And this implies that there exists some strictly universal, uh, pos universal strictly positive constant L for which the expected value of the supremum of the continuous time process can be bounded above by L times the integral of the square root of a logarithm, uh, which is dependent upon some sufficiently small parameter epsilon, which we integrate against uh, from zero to positive infinity. And now we can uh, get closer to concluding the presentation for our general uh, high level description of the phase transition for the long range easing model from the powers argument and how this relates to the particular formulation of the of, of the phase transition at the long range easing model in which the theorem, the theorem that we have here is that we have the powers argument for the long range contour system from the conjecture raised in the references, uh, which are going to be provided in the description of the video. So we're going to look for uh, d uh, greater than or equal to three. And uh, the the lower dimensions of the long range easing model is given by the fact that we restrict alpha to be strictly uh, greater than d, but it can be less than or equal to d plus one, in which there exists a suitable constant big C, which is dependent upon alpha and d, such that the probability of the long range uh, uh, the long range probability measure of the easing model under plus boundary conditions supported under some finite volume lambda of uh, the spin at the origin being minus one is bounded above by the sum of two exponentials. The first exponential which occurs is uh, dependent upon, uh, is directly proportional to or dependent upon minus C prime of beta, whereas the second exponential is dependent upon minus C prime, but inversely proportional to epsilon squared. And this is important because it allows us to conclude, as we're saying here, under the probability that this event for the spin at the origin being minus one can be can be bounded above by two exponentials. This implies with bold face P probability less than or equal to one minus exponential minus C prime beta plus exponential minus C prime beta epsilon to the minus two, that the phase transition occurs, which we had give, which we had given a statement of in the previous slide. So this is just demonstrating um, some very broad um, broad uh, strokes and a broad description of how the different parts of the arguments fit together and how we conclude with the Powell's argument uh, for demonstrating that phase transitions can occur from many different types of models uh, relating to the easing model. So we're going to provide some conclusions to close out in which we introduced the long range easing model, as well as we discuss properties of the phase transition in lower dimensions. And we provide an, an outline of the components of this argument from the long range contour system to coarse graining of the lattice due to that uh, classical, due to those classical arguments and even the pause argument, which was used to demonstrate that the easing model isn't always in the paramagnetic phase. And uh, thanks for watching.